Trust in Him to worship the Lord. Amen. Just want the Lord to have His way. I want us to continue uh, to pray one for another. I know there's still some that are dealing with this uh, sickness of whatever is going around. And uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you, it ain't good for nobody. So if you can avoid it, by all means necessary, do so. Amen. Amen. But nonetheless, let's pray for those that are still sick. Need the Lord to minister unto them. Also, I believe there was someone making mention of a family that had lost a loved one today. And let's remember this family. What's her name, Sister Kathy? Um, Daddy Kirby. Okay. And let's remember the Kirby family tonight. And the Lord would just minister and to touch. I wonder tonight if there's anyone else that has a need they'd like to make mention before we pray. Let's still remember Sarah. And then let's remember the couple that I'm Christopher for 79. Amen. Let's remember these tonight. Any other requests that we need to make mention of before we pray? Amen. Let's continue to remember Brother Sister John as well as traveling. I think he was there left today to go see some relatives of theirs up in uh, Tennessee, I believe he said, the son. Uh, so let's pray the Lord just keep his hand upon them. I know they're going to be gone for just a few weeks or a few days or a uh, little time. Amen. Nonetheless, but. Uh, just pray that God keep them safe. They can enjoy the, the holiday season. Amen. I wonder if there's any other requests tonight. Amen. All have spoken. Let's signify by lifting our hands. Amen. If we could, let us stand as a way of opening this service and just ask the Lord to help us tonight and to meet these needs and to minister in these lives. Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for this opportunity that you've given us to be in your house tonight. We thank you for your many blessings upon us. Thank you for all that you've done for us, God, and how you've ministered to us in our times of need. Pray that you'd touch every family that's dealing with this sickness, God, those that God need strength in their bodies, God, those that are dealing with loss tonight, that have God lost a loved one that was dear to them. We pray that you'd minister your peace, your comfort in this time unto their souls, their hearts, their lives. Keep your hand upon all those during this time of traveling, God, that you just minister. That you just keep by your grace and your mercy, God, that you would help your church, that you would minister to every need and every life, every home represented here tonight in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated once again. I want my usher to come at this time. All right. There you go. I guess I should start saying ushers. <laughs> oh, y'all have the very least. At our other church, amen, we were used to just having one usher. Amen. They both played the role, but nonetheless, amen, let's, amen. Brother Josh, if you would, that's the blessing of the offer tonight. God, we thank you again, Lord God, that we can come once again to worship you tonight, Lord God. We ask you that you just touch this offering, Lord God, to be used for your kingdom, Lord God. God, and we ask you to bless every heart and say what again tonight in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
appreciate the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. It's such a privilege and honor as I stated to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's a privilege to have Brother Thomas with us sneaking in. Amen. Yes. Stand in. Oh, there he is. Thomas, it's good to be in the Lord's house and good to be with God's people. We love the White Springs Church of God. And, uh, these folks have been a friend to us for the last couple of years. Just uh, glad to be with you tonight. Glad to worship the Lord. Yeah. I feel like David in the Psalms when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I look forward to being in God's house. Yeah. And I don't want it ever to become a drudgery or something that I have to dread. Uh, I always want to have that excitement and that zeal about being in the house of the Lord. Even on a Wednesday night when I'm tired. I was in chapel for two hours this morning. I was at a funeral for almost two hours this afternoon. And I kind of thought about, you know, I've been in church half the day today, and this would be a, a good night to lay out. But there's something on the inside that says, I want to be in the house of the Lord. I want to be where God's people are. And most of all, I want to be where God's presence is. Amen? Amen. Thank God for His presence here tonight. Amen. It's such a privilege and honor to have him with us in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I yes. told him, my wife told me the other day, she said, uh, Sunday we had some friends of ours visiting with us. And she said, I called them out about being here just a few minutes late. Amen. But little did I know, Sister Rachel, I gave them the wrong address. Amen. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, Thomas, church earlier today, so I'll just give them a hard time. It was actually the first time I think I've had maybe the opportunity to meet them once before, but good to have them. Their family in the house of the Lord with us tonight. Amen. Amen. No stranger to you folks, I'm sure. Y'all try to worship tonight. Listen to the words of this song. Amen. May the Lord help us nonetheless. Oh, 
Amen. Aren't you thankful tonight? Amen. And I've always had the opportunity or always felt that I was, amen, just a little backwards. Amen. The reason I say that tonight, amen, is Sister, uh, Sister Patty was mentioning, amen, we are to sing a Christmas song or two tonight. Amen. Nothing wrong with that, but you cannot sing about Christ and it not bring you back. Amen to Christmas. Amen. You can't think about all that God's done. Even I preached a message one time. Amen. I believe it was Easter on Luke chapter number one. Amen. The story of Christmas or Luke chapter number two and those angels were given that announcement. Amen. I just thought to myself, Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. It's all about Him tonight. Amen. And the work that He's willing to do inside of hearts and lives. Such a privilege an honor to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Glad you were able to be a part of it with us. Amen. Want the Lord just to minister and to bless. Amen. Let us continue to pray one for another. If you have your Bibles with you, we'll turn this over to the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter number 13 tonight. Gospel of John, chapter number 13. Amen. I'm going to begin reading with verse number 34. Very familiar passage of Scripture. Amen. I'm sure most of us have heard something or some message, I'm sure. Amen. On these lines. If you'll forgive me tonight, I'll seem a little more nervous. Amen. I've heard great things about Brother Thomas. Amen. The ministry and the messages he's preached here. Amen. So, with that being said, amen. Just pray the Lord will help us nonetheless. Amen. Such a privilege and honor. John chapter number 13, verse number 34. If you have it, would you say amen? Amen. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Amen. Can we, before we're seated tonight, join together and ask the Lord to help us in this place once again. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, your truth, your power, your strength. Thank you for your many blessings upon us. God, pray that you would touch each and every heart, each and every life that lies Pray that you administer in this sanctuary as only you can. Pray that you touch every soul, God, every heart. Minister, Lord, we pray. That you receive all the honor, the glory, and everything that's said in none of this place. Pray that you would just minister in this place tonight. According to your power, your strength, we pray. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to, the Lord, help me once again, amen, preach along the lines of, amen, or to use, I guess, as a title, amen, you could say, for the church, for you and I, it's time to rally around the banner, amen, to rally around the banner, amen, pray the Lord help us tonight, amen. Jesus speaking to his disciples here in the 13th chapter of John. He was talking regarding, amen, his work and what he wanted to accomplish in them. And he gives them, amen, an encouragement, a commandment. He says, a new commandment I give unto you. And he uses those words that we oftentimes heard many times before. He says that ye love one another, amen. He says, as I have loved you. Amen. He give them, amen, kind of, if you will, not the uh, want to or maybe a suggestion, but it was a commandment, he said, that they would love, they would demonstrate, that they would show the same type of love that he had shown them. Amen. The example that Christ had put in front of those disciples, amen, the example that he had set before them, amen, was the example he wanted them to carry on. Amen. Sister 
us to do. Amen. In the same ways, in the same regards. But can I tell you, I don't believe Jesus would have commanded if it were not possible to love. Amen. He said, love them that persecute you. He said, let's speak all manner of evil against you. Amen. It's our desire. We want to please God. That we have to love those that may not love us. Amen. 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 Help us, Holy Ghost, this evening. Amen. But we find these words probably were a little strange to the disciples nonetheless. Amen. But the commandment given to them was that they would love as Christ had loved. Amen. He says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. How will we know? How shall others see? How are they going? What will be the example or the demonstration? He says, if you have love, or the love we have one to another would be that demonstration, would be that, and a banner, if you will, would be that example to others, the love that we have for one another in our lives would show our love for God. Amen. Help me, Holy Ghost, this evening. I began to think about all that takes place in life and all that has transpired. Amen. And you'll just bear with me for a moment as I've already stated. Amen. But the church needs once again to be reminded of the love that God has shown to us that we might in turn show it unto a world one more time. I want to say this real quickly. Amen. If I, if I don't put the disclaimer on it so I don't confuse anyone. I know we're living, Brother Thomas, in a day and age where it seems like the church has gained or come to a point where if we are to love people, then we have to accept everything. The reality is, amen, I love my children, but I don't have to put up with their bad attitudes. I don't have to like the way they act. Amen. That's not love. Amen. That's not what God wants from us, church. Amen. We live in a world that says, well, if you disagree with me or my mentality or my opinion, then you really don't love me. Amen. Well, that's a sad fact of the matter because Jesus looked at the hypocrites of the day and he said, you are Amen. 
that. You say, Brother Mitchell, that's not correct. Well, amen. What did the Apostle Paul say in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13? Amen. Everybody knows, amen, what we're fixing to talk about. He says, though I speak with the tongues, or with the tongues of men and of angels, he says, and have not charity. I am become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Amen. And though I have the gifts of prophecy and understand all mere mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Amen. Help the Holy Ghost to see He says, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, Though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Right. Amen. The church, amen. I know, let me back up for a moment. I know there's a lot of different standards and a lot of different opinions. Brother Thomas, there's, amen. Brother Stephen, we'll just we'll not get confused about who we're talking about. I've been working on this for the past couple of weeks, amen, but nonetheless. But Stephen, amen. There's a lot of people that have opinions. And a lot of churches, they're known for their standing. If you go to this church, Brother Mike, you can't watch television. And go to that church, and you can't do this. And you can't wear that. And you can't act like this. And you can't do all of these things. And these people eat fish on Sundays. And these people don't ever eat fish at all. I you know, say, Brother Mitchell, it's not that crazy. You'd be surprised just how crazy it is out there.
administer it. And kind of taking advantage of situations just a little bit. What I'm saying is I remember sitting in a church somewhere and somebody coming to me and saying, did you hear? My brother so-and-so. Did you hear what happened to him and his wife? Did you, did you know what happened? Brother Mike, I remember he meant it just breaking my heart, not because, amen, of the, you know, what had really transpired, but because, amen, they were in my mind tearing down somebody I admired and a man of God that I looked up to over the course of my life. Amen, what I'm saying is, amen, a good, loving church member wouldn't have been happy about what happened to the man. It's excited, ecstatic, if you will, amen, about all of the downs and ups of everybody else in life, amen. I'm trying to stay on course tonight, amen. Now just bear with me once again. He says, charity fell or never fell. He said, whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish. He said, for now, or we know now in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part shall be done away. Amen. He goes on and gives us these things that charity, amen, does not do. It is able to bear all things. Endure all things. Amen. I thought about it. Nobody, I'm sure, tonight's ever had problems. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and say marital issues. How about that? <laughs> well, I'm just using it as an example of the Leo because that's what Jesus did, or what's what Paul did. He said, when comparing the love of Christ for the love that he had for the church, he said, it was like that of a husband. He said, ought to love their wives after that man. As he had so loved the church and gave himself for it. So I'm just doing what he did and comparing the two. But isn't it amazing that in those instances and sometimes Sister Tuesday and I have been married only 13 years and are going into our 13th year. Amen. May will be 13 years. How about that? All right. For those that think I don't know, I'm not keeping track. It's 13. Amen. Wonderful, glorious years. But I would be dishonest to you to say that we haven't had some problems along the way. Amen. I wouldn't, I'm not here to tell you my whole life story and everything that goes on. I'm just simply saying we're just like you. Amen. We're all human. There's not a one of us tonight that probably couldn't. I remember, Sister Scott, there have been some folks that said, I don't want to have a relationship like that. And I said, oh, or like that person, him and his wife, they just admired them. I said, oh, if you only knew what was going on there. Amen. You may change that. So because they're just as human as you and I are. Amen. But what I'm saying tonight, when you have that sort of love, amen, I have never understood in one minute you can be so mad, amen, that you're ready just to walk out the door. Mm -hmm. Amen. Turn on me. Just joking. <laughs> but the feeling's there. You just, you can, one minute you just, just don't want it all. The next minute you say, I wouldn't know what to do if they was gone. Amen. My point is that I, that's what they call love. That's what I've been told. Amen. I don't know that to be true, but my point is, church, there's folks that oftentimes are down with God because somebody in the church heard. Come on. Amen. Somebody in the church done that wrong. Somebody done talked about it. So the first person they're wanting to give up on is God. Right. Yes. That's right. But love suffered long. Love is able to bear all things. It endureth all things. Amen. Right. Good and bad. Amen. Love is able to be the rallying point. Amen. Love should be the banner which our lives are under. Amen. That if anything else defines the church, it's the love that we have unto our Savior. Amen. Amen. That should be what dictates our life. Help me tonight. Amen. Just for a moment, bear with me. The banner of God's love should be, amen, the place that the church has to rally around, amen. When Jesus was looking at in the book, in the book of Revelations, when he was talking to John, he used in the, to describe the, the church in Ephesus. He said to them, you what? Let your first love. All right. It was that love they had lost, amen. We're living in a day and age. People don't have a Thomas, that does 
desire to be in the house of the Lord like they used to. Me and my wife, when we first got together, Brother Wilson, mm -hmm. if we heard a revival within two hours, we were probably going to try. Yeah. Well, that was before we had kids and a job that required you to be there all day long. Amen. And so we didn't have very many responsibilities. So the older we got and the more kids we had and the more the responsibilities lingered and were there. He might have been here one ten minutes down the road. We're lucky to get there on time. Amen. That's just the way it goes sometimes. I understand that. But in large part, amen. Amen. Wednesday nights, Sunday nights, amen. Revival times, prayer meetings, men and women are losing their desire for the things of God. Even what is it that love for Him is growing cold? Yes. Why? Come on, come on. Amen. There's probably many reasons and many circumstances. Many excuses we could probably offer, but the reality is this. None of them will matter. Amen. When it's all said and done. Amen. None of them are going to matter. Amen. My desire tonight, church, is this. Amen. No matter what's taken place, what's happened over the past couple of years, months, days, in our families, and our circumstances, amen, I believe the church can one more time be an example to a lost and dying world of the love of God in our lives. Amen. Listen. Amen. The psalmist declared these words in Psalm chapter 60. Amen. I know this may not make sense to you, but bear with me once again. Psalm 60. He said, Oh God, Thou hast cast, up, cast us off. Thou hast scattered us. Thou hast been displeased. O turn thyself to us again. Thou hast made the earth to tremble. Thou hast broken it. Heal the breaches thereof, for it shaken. Thou hast shewed thy people hard things. And thou hast made us to drink the wine of astonishment. But listen, verse number four. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of, thy, uh, because of the truth. Amen. Listen. When I began to read those words, I thought to myself, Oh God, what is the church displaying? Amen. What is the church showing to a lost and dying world? What is the banner that is over us once again. What can be said about our church? Our lives. And the thought stuck with me. Amen. God's banner over us should be love. Yes. Amen. amen. It should be His love. As Jesus declared. Listen. Amen. God's banner of love is the banner for His church. Amen. It is under this banner that we are united. We find our strength. Amen. To stand strong and wage war against the powers of darkness. Amen. Under the banner of God's love. It is a rallying point. Amen. I could go into details and talk to you about stuff that I amen, read online. Amen. About what a banner represented and the, uh, the lineage behind it and this, that, and the other. But all of those things, Brother Josh, don't really mean a whole lot. Amen. All of us was kind of a symbol, if you will, in the days of battle. Nothing more than a symbol, a place that was put on high to kind of show them in a standard of those that were coming out. Amen. It was that focal point for them to look to, even to remember what they were fighting for, to remember what they were there in the first place to accomplish. Amen. They were fighting for their king, they were fighting for the one who had represented. Amen. What we as the church must get back to the place is we remember. Amen. Listen. Peter said it best. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 22. Listen. Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit, the unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Amen. I read amen, one of the commentaries concerning this. Amen. And I like what the gentleman said. Amen. He says to us, why would God, through Peter, amen, why would he speak to the church and tell them, you've obeyed the truth in loving the brethren, yes. but see that you love one another fervently. Yes. Yes. See that you continue 
Amen. And that love. Amen. This commentator brought out the fact that these two words, there's four types of word. I'm sure you've heard that before. The word love written in the New Testament, there's four different definitions or four different types of love in which they're concerning themselves with. But the type of love that Peter's talking about here or that, the, that God is saved through him, amen, to the church is this, amen. He says you have love for the brethren. You go obey the truth. You purify your souls and you have love, amen. You have a familiarity. It's kind of a friendship. It's one of those things where... You see a reflection of yourself and someone else, you'll have things in common. Unlike men, my wife, she likes one devil team, and I like it. <laughs> football, I, I've, I've went through withdrawals. This football season's over, you know, it's coming to an end, and I've kind of, I've had it for the past few days, few weeks, amen. I don't know how to do it myself, but that's one thing, amen. We just never agreed on. Somebody say amen, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. amen. You just can't find any common ground there. You'll grow up one day. <laughs> he told me it was going to convert me. He, man, I don't think it's going to happen. But nonetheless, it will happen. I ain't going to. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, though. We differ. There's no commonality. I, I don't love. I've not lost anything in games. Still, no offense to anybody that goes there, but there's nothing there I want to go for. <laughs> I don't care how big of a sale they had going on down there at the Walmart and Gainesville or Toys R Us or wherever it might be, I probably wouldn't go. I'd just spend the extra money. It's the way I feel about it. But nonetheless, there is no love lost is what I'm saying. No commonality. Amen. There's no kind of, you know that's how some folks are in church. They just, you know, right. I have a love for it. It, it just, if it does good for me, I, I'll go. If I find some pleasure in it, then I'll be there. If it does meet some need in me, or if there's some sort of, I like to preach, I like to sing, I like the songs, I like the people, then I'm just going to go. Right. That's the kind of love he was talking about. If you have a common love, there's that friendship. You see something in it that does something for you, so you have an affection towards it. Yes. That's how some folks love it. That's why, Brother Leo, whenever things go tough, <laughs> that stuff begins to fade. They don't want to come to the house of the Lord anymore. They find it hard to get up and go to church. Why? Because that kind of love only goes so far. Whenever it stops being beneficial to me, that love starts to run out. And that's how some folks' love for church and for the things of God is. It stops benefiting me. The preacher's starting to be long-winded. He never preached that good to begin with. Man, singing's horrible, this, that, and the other. Even somebody looked at me wrong, we don't have as many friends to go to church, so we don't want to be there anymore. That's the way it goes. Even that's just the way it is. But God encouraged the church through Peter. He said, seeing that you've obeyed the truth for this unfeigned, this unmatched love. He said, see that you do it fervently. Have a true love, that unconditional love, that agape love. Amen. That kind of love that sees the value in it, regardless of what it does for me. Right. You see, that's the way God loved us. Regardless of what we can give Him in return. Regardless of what we can benefit Him, He still valued us. Amen. He still had a passionate desire for you and I. Amen. A love
But it's not to put aside. Amen. It's not to, amen, take and just wipe away everything. But it's simply, amen, to come unto Him. Amen. amen. Let His love transform. Let His love make new. Let His unconditional love flow through our hearts and lives. Again, would you stand with me all over the house if you can? The enemy would love nothing more than to keep us scattered, divided to ourselves. Because in those situations and those circumstances, we're weakened, we're exposed, amen. We, we can't wage the warfare that we need. We can't feel as though we're part of the battle because we're separated, amen. That psalm in Psalm 60 was talking about an occasion when God had given victory over the Edomites, but the Assyrians were still a problem. And David said, God, we've seen the cup of astonishment. We've we drank of that. We've done this, that, and that. But God, you gave us a banner. Amen. For those that fear you. Amen. Because of thy truth. Because of your word. Amen. And I understand tonight, I may not be making sense. Amen. But the church still has a purpose. Yes. Amen. The church still has a point of emphasis once again to be united under the banner of God. Amen. To be effective once again in the, the waging of warfare against the enemy. To even lift high the name of God in our lives. That a world that is lost and dying, broken, may know that there is still a God of love that will transform that change that individual spot. Amen. I pray the church once again come back to that point that His love is what's seen in our lives. Heavenly Father, I thank You tonight for this church. Thank You for every soul, every heart, every body that's entered into this place tonight. I thank You for this opportunity that You've given us to be here. God. Amen. But I pray, Lord, more than anything this evening, you would touch every soul, every heart, every life, God, those that are scattered, those that are off in the distance alone. God, I pray you would give us that rallying point under your banner once again. I pray you remind us of that unfading love, God, that powerful love of your spirit working in our lives, transforming your church, God, helping us be an example, this Oh. <laughs> 
appreciate the mercies of the Lord this evening. I appreciate each and every one that's been able to be at the house of the Lord with us tonight. Amen. First John simply said it like this. Amen. He said, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen. I know there's a lot of folks. Amen. We shake hands. We tell each other, church, I love you. Amen. I love you. I appreciate you. And I pray that that don't want to be not just something we say, but an action that is known in the church. It used to be said by Thomas years ago of churches. When we went and visited within that church, that's a loving church. Yeah. It's getting far and few between nowadays. Amen. To go visit churches now, they judge you before you walk in the door. Amen. That ain't God's love. Amen. That's a church's standard. But His standard is still true. Amen. His standard still transforms, still makes new. Amen. Through Him we can accomplish what He's called us for to be. Amen. A church that has shown His love to the lost and dying world. Amen. Let's keep in mind Sunday night after church. Amen. This uh, is coming up Sunday. And there will be some refreshments, some little finger foods. I think ladies are going to get together and do something kind of a little time of fellowship following the evening service. Let's come and worship the Lord, but nonetheless, let's not forget about that. We'll make that mention as well. And also, next Wednesday night, I believe it's the uh, 23rd, I believe if I'm not mistaken, next Wednesday is the 23rd. Uh, that'll be the Wednesday before uh, Christmas and all. I know there's going to be some out. I don't know what the church wants to do. Maybe we'll talk about it Sunday, but keep in mind, uh, we kind of want to make sure everybody's going to be here. We're, we're not planning on going anywhere. I'll preach to the pew. Amen. If five or six show up, amen, it don't matter to me. I've been there before. I'll do it again. But at the same hand, amen, we don't have to run the lights. Amen. Don't have to turn the air on. It'll save the church money. So if people aren't going to come and support it, then we're not going to have to. But keep that in mind. If you want to come, we're going to be here. Amen. We'll maybe look at it Sunday. Maybe some people may have something that comes up. But just keep that in mind as far as it goes right now, Wednesday night. I know we've got some traveling with families and different things, but uh, we may not wind up having service. But if you want to, amen, we'll address that Sunday. Make sure who's going to come and uh, who, who can make sure to be here. I know sickness comes. You never know what might take place. But if we could, once again, let's stand and be dismissed in prayer. It was a privilege to have the Thomas family with us again tonight. Amen. 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 Brother Thomas, if you would, dismiss us in prayer. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word tonight. We thank you for the reminder, God, that you built this church upon love. This is the earmark. This is the benchmark of the Christian faith. Jesus, you said to your disciples, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, by your love one to one another. And I pray that that evidence will be present in our lives. Help us not only to love those who love us in return, but help us to love our enemies and pray for those who despitefully use us and persecute us without a cause. Let the, let the love of God be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And let it be said, they'll know we're Christians by our love. We thank you, we praise you for your word tonight. Bless this church, bless the ministry here, and let it continue and let it, let it be fruitful in the days to come. We pray your blessings upon this house. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name.